All right, here we go. Varus. This reminds me of the Final Fantasy Tactics intro. It's all black and white, scrolling text. Three people in chat will get that reference, that's fine. My man looking big. I am more than this. We are more. What I could learn from studying such a weapon. Fascinating. Okay, so this isn't the cards, it's just science. like a piercing dart. Aim for the heart. That weapon calls to me, offering a great hunt. So we're getting a bunch of people using like the blighted. Weapons? And where we Is that what they're called? Glide with weapons? We will take it. Through power eclipses both day and night. I will end their cyclical war. Corrupted weapons? Okay. You are soft, Varus. Weak, too human. So much blood. So much life. The arrow of retribution will find Imagine just getting like <laughs> these guys got these big ass longbows and they're just shooting people from point blank range. This is the power of the dark. <laughs> Within spitting distance and they're like, hold on. <laughs> anyway, that's sick. Uh October 12th, what do we got here? Yeah, seven days, exactly one week away. It's cool, 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 cool. Samson, thank you so much for the 17 months. Appreciate it, dude. It's always it's always good seeing you in here. All right, okay, let's check out let's check out the cards. Let's check out the cards. Um, starting with Mr. Varus. Varus, four mana, three four. Quick attack, shocker. Origin, the arrow of retribution. We'll go into that in a second. I think that's on a different page. Uh, and auto equip the darkened bow. Okay, very similar to like Jax or Kane, it looks like. Uh, you have targeted eight plus allies. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, so like, the first one that comes to mind is like Pantheon, right? Uh, three, four, quick attack. Not great stats. Let's see what uh, let's see what his origin is and what the bow does first. Uh, okay. You may put any cultist cards in your deck during deck building. Once you have played three plus cultist spells, draw bears. Oh, like Kane. That's cool. I kind of hope all the cultist ones are that. That's, it's actually really nice because you're just always drawing your champ. Which is cool. And then dark and bow, two mana, zero, zero equipment. When you play a spell or equip an ally, give me plus one, plus one, max plus five, plus oh, until the next time my bearer strikes. Oh, it's spells. It's not units. Oh, so like momentous choice. And, you, and it's not turns, it's each time. So Momentous Choice counts twice. Mmm. All right, so Dark and Bow goes burr when you cast spells. And you use Cultist stuff. So Varus auto-equips to a 4-4, four four, if I'm understanding that correctly. Yeah, because it counts as an equipment, I suppose. So it's a 4-4 four four on offense the first time. Uh, and then as you cast a spell, it gets bigger. Then when you target eight allies, um, oh no, it's not targeted allies eight plus times. You have to target eight separate allies? No, that can't be right. That can't be right. I have to imagine the wording sucks and that it's you've targeted allies eight plus times. It should be you can use one ally. Yeah, I think it's just bad wording. Riot wording kind of sucks. <laughs> it's because they try to make it as like simple and concise as possible. But until you see exactly how it works, it's like. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's just bad wording. Um, when various levels, he gains overwhelm and plus one plus one. Like these are these are really good offensive stats. Um, he auto equips the bow. It activates twice and has max plus 10 plus O. So if I'm understanding this correctly, Leveled Varus is a 4-5. The turn if you if it's not the turn you play him, leveled Varus is a 4-5. You momentous choice. Giving plus one plus one. And then the bow gives plus two plus two. So 
with one mana burst spell that's auto turned on leveled Varus is a 10-5 quick attack overwhelm if i'm understanding that correctly which seems i don't know man really fucking good Bo gives plus 10. Bo gives up to plus 10. Up to plus 10. Until he strikes, then it goes away. So, one momentous choice would be plus 6. Sounds like you want to play Nami Varus. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the worst thing on the planet. Jesus Christ. Um, and momentous choice is like a cultist spell. So you get to play it even if you're not in Ionia. Oh my god. He's going to hit so hard. What is his, uh, Varus' Chains of Corruption, Burst. Give an enemy vulnerable and give an ally plus one this round. Okay, it's like the, the, the Shurima two mana spell. Create a Fleeting Chains of Corruption. Oh, cool, you could do it multiple times. It's like Old Hush. That's cool. I like this card. This is, this is a very valuable champ spell because it's insane when you have a Varus on board, right? Does Kane Varus have enough cards to make an actual 49 card deck? I don't know, maybe not. Uh, that's nuts. Okay, is, is there anything else on this page we need to go over first? Uh, no. Okay, let's, so let's start with here. We got, it looks like a cycle of cultist spells. Uh, starting with the Unending Wave, Bilgewater Burst, 4 mana. Once you have an equipped and ally this game, uh, small reminder, when you play Varus, this is already turned on. Or Kane, right? Uh, it costs 2 less, so it's a 2 mana burst. Draw 2 and give them fleeting. Um, <laughs> um, um, oh, uh, we've like, we've seen Twisted Fate, right? Like, that's nuts. That's insane. Yeah. What the fuck? You're just going to play this in Twisted Fate and like turbo level him. That's so stupid. What in the world? It's, it's almost Pot of Greed, yeah. That's insane. It's a cycle, but it's completing the follower and spell cycle, Kane. It's the opposite five regions. That's dope. That's super sick. Uh, also, this card is this card is bonkers good. Like, you're just going to play it in a TF deck, a low to the ground Twisted Fate deck, and you're going to do disgusting things. Like, you know what deck plays this? You know what deck wants this really bad? Um, like a Nami PNZ style deck, like an all in deck, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Or like TF Fizz type shit. That's what that's what wants this card. This is insane. This this has potential to be really, really good. Not in a lot of things, don't get me wrong. Like every deck doesn't want to play this. But the decks that do want to play it, you're gonna hate. <laughs> you're gonna hate it. Uh all right, let's let's move on. Let's move on. The Unforgiving Cold, four mana, frail word burst seems to be kind of similar. Frostbite, the strongest enemy. If you have equipped an ally this game, copy me. It's four mana, harsh winds. Eh, whatever. I'm not super sold on that one. Harsh winds already is, like, not that good. And you get to choose. Like, if Demacia mirrors become a thing, where you're just slapping units together, then, yeah, this could be really good. But... It seems pretty good. I don't know. It's not like... It's not that the effect is underpowered. It's just like... I don't know what decks want to play this. And the decks that do want to play this are like not very good. It's double spell? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, you can play with Kane, all that stuff. But like, Kane doesn't need that shit. You know what I mean? Like, Kane just kills things. He doesn't really care how big the opponent's units are. Because he always ends up bigger. Good into Varus if he's oppressive. Yeah, there's probably just other better things. I also like to target my opponent. I like to choose. Because sometimes you don't always want to Frostbite. Like, with Harsh Winds, you don't want to Flash Freeze, like, the two biggest. Sometimes you want to Flash Freeze this one and Zoe or something. Um, I don't know. I'm not sold on this. I'm sure other people are, like, super hyping this up, but... I'm not sold. I'll have to see. I will. I will reserve my judgment. Uh, but let's move on. Two mana, P and Z, the Violent Discord. Also spelt Cord. That's funny. Uh, fast Speed, Cultist Spell. These are all Cultist Spells. Deal one to a unit. If you have equipped an ally this game, copy me with the same targets. So it's deal one, deal one. Not very good. Like, it's a flow enabler. It does four damage with Gatalyst. It does deal four damage with Gatalyst. And it enables flow. 
And this is a... Uh, this appears to be a Seraphine card, if Seraphine's coming out, because we think Seraphine's coming out, right? Otherwise, I would assume it'd be, like, Sona. So, if they're a flow card, then, like, this could be really good. Yeah, no, it is two, it is two Ezreal procs. Um, I exp if, if, uh, if the whole, like, Annie Ezreal deck didn't get nerfed, this card would be insane, right? This card would be so good. With, like, Tybalk shit? Mm. Gatalyzers or Gatalyst or whatever that card's called. It's, like, not an incredibly good card. But, like, the Tybalk engine was good. And this would be insane with that. I, I like that we have this because it goes with stuff. And I think that's cool. And I like spells like that. Where you can, you can like, put some other stuff in your deck. And with synergy, it ends up being more powerful. I like that. This is a skill on some unit that we haven't seen yet. We read this. We read this. You'd love to see Ravenbloom come back? Yeah, me too. Uh, four mana, Targon, Burst. The Expanse is Protection. Once you have equipped an ally this game, I cost two less. Okay, so we're going to assume after turn four or five, it'll be a two mana, give an ally spell shield this round. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I don't know how good. It's good in the same way that, like, Memory Cloak is good. Which it isn't. It's just not worth playing, usually. It's insane. Yeah, it asks you... It, it asks a lot from you. You have to, like... Have a unit Sunny thinks this card's cracked? Yeah, I think a lot of people will think this card's cracked. Um, and, like, it might be good. If you end up in a Cultist deck or something, or even just, like, a Targon deck where you're super all-in, like, I'm thinking back to Zoe Lee. Like, I don't even think I would want to play this in old Zoe Lee. Um, maybe, like, one copy. But the problem is it asks you to have, like, a threat that's basically going to end the game. But you don't want to cast it until, like, it, you already have this game-ending threat. Otherwise, it's just not very good. You're spending two mana to, like, spell shield a random unit, and it's only for the round? It's like, Panth decks love this? I don't know. I think it's, I think coins are, I think it's bait. Like, I don't want to play this in Pantheon. If this was legal right now, I don't think I would play it in Pantheon. I need, yeah, you need to be proactive with your spells in Pantheon. And stuff and like it, it's just gonna sit and rot in your hand for a long time and then you're gonna use it to stop a mystic shot on your goat because you can't find a better target <laughs> and you just want to cast something i don't know i think it's not that good in the current format it's not that good if there's a super all-in combo deck that's very very strong and in targon then we can talk about it but until that point i'm not sold but I think people are going to lose their mind about this one. Yeah, I think uh, I think, I think think people are going to be surprised. People are going to go absolutely nuts about this card, just breaking the format, and then it's not going to make... It's not even going to make waves when it comes out. All right, let's move on. Uh, you can get extra keyword. Well, you just play Eula, which is, like, strictly better, right? Because you can use it proactively, and it comes with a 3-3. Not strictly better. There are spots where Expanse's Protection is better, but Eula is just, like, in my opinion, like, way better. Uh, all right, let, let's let's move on. That's my opinion on this. I'm not budging. <laughs> we'll see who's right. Uh, four mana, Bandle, the Sudden Surge, Burst. Once you have equipped an ally this game, I cost two less. Grow an ally to 5-5 five, five this round. I'm going to lose this card. I am going to lose to this card. Um, I don't think it's super, super good. I don't think you're going to start... Unless there's like a Bandle City... Like, you're not playing this in like a Varus deck or a Kane deck right? Bandle City probably doesn't play this unless <clears throat> there's like a super equipment focused Bandle City deck. It is a pain in the ass though. Why is this a con shit? It's not. You can't hit this off conch. It's four mana. It only becomes two mana once it's like in your hand and stuff, right? Kind of like Burble. Yeah, like a Tristana Jax or something. That's true. That's true. Um, Yeah, I'm like, I don't think this is going to make super big constructed waves unless, like, yeah, Tristana Jax or something happens. 
but mm, using it on husks is funny. That's true. I am not sold. Okay, moving on to the units. Four mana cultist P and Z. Ambitious cultist. Once you've equipped an ally this game, create a new spell that costs two in hand and set its cost to zero. Uh, cool. Cool. Not incredibly competitive, I don't think. But a cool card. I like this card. I think it's I think it's fun. This isn't gonna be played in any tier one decks or anything. It's just cool. Uh Blooming Cultist, three mana, Bandle City, Attune. Love Attune. Once you've equipped an ally this game, grant me elusive. Mmm. Three two elusive attune for three mana. Is that good enough? I think probably not. Okay, the one thing that could save this card, right? These are cultists, so you can play them in, like, dark index with the origin. That would be where you'd want it. Because you're not going to play it in, like, a normal Bandle City deck. At least, I don't think so. I think there are better Bandle City cards you'd be playing. Like, uh, Bandle Commando, the one to elusive that makes um, owls, I think, is stronger on curve for Bandle decks. But... We could see it in a cultist deck that uses big weapons that puts like a lot of power on stuff. So maybe, who knows? Uh, Buru cultist, one mana, two, two. Ooh, okay. Um, when equipped allies attack, deal one to the enemy nexus. This one will likely see play uh, because it is a cultist that uh, helps draw your champions. It's a one mana, two, two, very like low cost to put this card in your deck. You get a little bit extra damage sometimes. Like, this one we'll see play. Do we already have enough this is pirates? Apparently not. Uh, yeah, so this, this card, it won't be insane or anything, but it'll be good, I think. It seems broken. It's good. It's very strong. It's very strong. Uh, so, yeah. Expect to see this one in competitive play. This is probably the best competitive unit we've seen so far. Uh, Icefield Cultist, 5 mana Freljord. 5-5, five, five, your equipped allies have Overwhelm. Oh, it's Orn's support. <laughs> Orn finally got the card he needed. Yeah, this one's okay. This one's all right. I guess. Um, Like, both Kane and Varus already have Overwhelm. So you don't really want it? it seems slow for 5 mana. It is slow for 5 mana. Uh, plus, Freljord currently isn't playing a bunch of the equipped units. Now, I do think, I do think we'll likely see an Orn buff, maybe again. And I think Orn's Forge has potential to be really strong. So, I'm not saying there's a deck there yet. I'm just saying, when there is a deck there, and I think there will be, Ice Veil Cultist will be pretty good. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Right now, no. But maybe later. Just keep an eye on it. Um, Frodo is getting a Darken equipment this expansion. That could be a really big deal. Because the Darken equipments have been pretty insane so far. Um, okay. Lunari Cultist. Two mana Targon, one three. When I'm summoned or once you've equipped an ally this game, create a gem in hand. Is it or or is it and? <laughs> so like, if I summon this one three... And then I equip an ally. It's and. God, there's... <laughs> bro, they need to fix their, <laughs> their, like, their wording on this shit. I also think it's both. Uh, that's not too bad of a card. There's a lot of decks that would have wanted this in the past. And I imagine there will be some decks that want this in the future. Uh, currently, the Pantheon list, like, Fior Pantheon is pretty flush with cards that it really doesn't want to cut. Yeah, like, right now, I think, like, Goat is better. But there is a world where, like, you end up running more faded units, uh, Goat and Lunari Cultist, just to, like, guarantee that you're going to hit this. Yeah, and Varus loves gems. That's a great point. Varus, Varus really likes gems. Because leveled Varus, a gem on leveled Varus is uh, one power permanently and two power temporarily. So it's plus three, plus oh for each gem, which is pretty sick. So, yeah, not too bad of a card, honestly. I think that one, I think that one is totally fine. Is better an auction pants than what? Better than what? Is the thing, right? Like, what are you cutting? Um, but yeah, I think this card has potential. This is a cool card. Gems are really powerful. Incredibly powerful. Um, 
Okay, yeah, looks like that's it. I'm excited. This looks cool. Varus is really interesting. I like that you can, like... Because Varus is, like, a hyper-carry in League. And I really like that you can, like... He's, he's a squishy hyper-carry. So if you're able to just go, like, thing, 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 attack, and then prevent him from dying, he could just, like, kill your opponent. And I think that's super sick. I'm pretty excited. So it, I, I also like the cultist. Like, now that we're getting the cultist origin stuff, like fleshed out a little bit more like a lot more cards right uh kane is getting like all these cards can also be played in kane decks um and that's i think is really really good because i was worried he was just going to be kind of like left in the dust but he's getting a lot of support all the cold i just i don't know man I every every time i see new cards i just i get excited because i really like the direction that i think rune is heading i think all the new stuff is exciting uh it pushes the boundaries a little bit it opens up play in different ways. I think that's super sick. Do I not like the Ambitious Cultist? Which one's that? No, I do not like the Ambitious Cultist. Uh, are we going to watch Varus gameplay? Is there Varus gameplay? I don't see it. That's not it. Oh. Here we go. Hey, look. We know what all these cards do. What I could learn from studying such a weapon. Yo, Croc, thank you so much for the five months, man. Oh, that's a good hit. Zero mana twin disciplines. Fair. Bloodshed is the only way, isn't it? Grant me your power. Let me end our war. It is and this card can be very good. I think people will be surprised. Oh, that's right. You can flip him at, like, burst speed in combat. Through the only streamer that pronounces your name correctly? Hell night. yeah. Beware those who have nothing to lose. All right. Seven out of ten level up animation. We deliver their end. We deliver their end. Why would they play Zulani in a Mono Sharima deck? Playing three cultists, pull a cane and a Varus? I believe so, yeah. Varus says spells? Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good thing to realize. Step closer to retribution. Varus seems cool. Yeah, no, I like it. I'm a fan. October 12th. Subscribe! Subscribe! <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's cool. Okay, so, yeah, Varus is spells, which should be pretty easy, because Momentous Choice is like two, right? Already. <laughs> um, if you have an equipped unit. I think this is cool. I'm I'm stoked. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. All right, YouTube folks. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'll see you guys next time.